Well, g'day, curd nerds, and welcome back. This is Ask the Cheese Man, episode... Oh, what are we? Uh, 274. Nearly mucked that up. Um, big happy birthday goes out to Patricia, who's in the chat. She says she's 29. <laughs> uh, and uh, it is of, then, of course, my birthday on Tuesday as well. We share the same day. Isn't that good? Curd nerds. All right. Um... Thank you to all of the uh, financial members of the channel. Uh, let me just show that. Uh, no new members today, but uh, thank you to all of the financial members who make the show possible. Um, those members who are YouTube members, you will see uh, as... I think they've got blue text. Yeah, blue te text in the, um, in the chat. Uh, and of course, all of the Patreons as well. Thank you, patrons, uh, for supporting the channel. It's absolutely fantastic. I'll just turn off the auto thing over there. There we go. Back to me. Thank you very much. And Heidi, thank you so much for your super chat. I don't know, why is the curd nerd light not going? I don't know why. Hang on, let's just fix that. It's It was working a minute ago. Oh, goodness me. Heidi, thank you so much for the $10. We'll get it to work in a second. Oh, there we go. It's figured itself out. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, thank you for the birthday wishes. Oh, and it's going off again. I don't know what's going on here. It's, it was a bit slow. It was a bit slow this morning. Very cool. All righty. Um, now, a big thank you to Michelle Alston for signing up for the Beginners and the blue cheese course first person to sign up for the blue cheese course over at courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au or better known as the curd nerd academy so uh well done i hope you're progressing well through there michelle uh and drop us a line if you've got any questions during the course i'm sure we'll catch up sometime during the courseware um videos this week i'm currently working on red leicester uh so and I showed the cheese to Kim the other day um, after it's been maturing for about, about a, three weeks. Yeah, about three weeks. Uh, and she said, gee, that's red. And I said, yep. Because I was trying to replicate, um, if you remember back to the Cheese Day Challenge, uh, there was a Snowdonian Red Leicester or Red Bomber or something like that, which was a Red Leicester derivative. Uh, and I wanted to make that. So that's what I've done. So it's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, it's, it looks really good. Hopefully it's going to taste just as well as well. As well. Um, what else? Uh, and uh, Stilton is coming along nicely. I've uh, redone my Stilton recipe from 11 years ago. That's when the first one was posted. Um, updated a little bit. Uh, tweaked it slightly. And it's looking really good. Um, so I'll just make sure that I've turned that today as well. And of course, the Tassie Devil taste test will be coming up soon um, because that's nearly ready to eat. Uh, and finally, just a little uh, community announcement. The white uh, mold ripened cheese course is progressing well. We're, ben and I are about halfway through the content. Um, so that should be coming to you in about two weeks time uh, for those who want to learn uh, a, a structured way of making uh, white mold cheeses and there's going to be six different recipes in that course as well as a lot of technical information up front and uh, information on how to be successful so that's very cool um let's say good day to a few people first person today was persnickety i don't even know if he's there anymore i haven't seen pop up for a while but um thanks for the photos today um we got shauna g'day shauna lovely to see you. and thank you for some photos too um we got uh, the chairman we've got heidi hello heidi we got anita first time um and we'll get to your question in a sec uh katarina hello how are you um who we got elliot and oh, i hope i haven't missed anybody dennis Patricia, um, of course, since I said happy birthday to you. Somebody in Arabic, I can't really translate that. So if you can 
just pop your name in English so I can um, I can call you by your name when you pop a comment in. Uh, Michael and Jenny, welcome. Boris, g'day. Herb, um, Anthony, Titus, Croesus of Borg. It's always good to have the Borg watching. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be uh, assimilated as long as I'm a cheese. That would be cool. Uh, who else we got? We got uh, Jeanette. G'day, Jeanette. Lovely to see you. Um, oh, Persnickety's back. Good o. Um, Bruce Goldfinch. G'day, Bruce. Thanks for the photos, mate, and the chat we had the other day. And Liz. G'day, Liz. Lovely to see you. So we've got about 30 people watching. It's all very cool. All right. Um, so let's get to the first question. And I said, who was that? That was Anita, I think. Here we go. So, Anita says, as a newbie, uh, what's the best first cheese to make? Ooh. Okay. So, I do have a, a video saying um, cheeses to make for beginners. Hang on, let me just see if I can dig that up. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Um, is this all going to work? Yep, here we go. So, to the channel page, Batman. And we go to the search and we look for beginners. Ah, oh, there we go. Beginner's cheese list with no cheese cave. Um, is the video you're after. And can we get a little bit of movie magic happening here? Um, there we go. There's the link for you, um, Anita. So, look, off the top of my head. Um, oh, persnickety. Goodness me, you've blown me away. Um, thank you so much. Uh... I'll just finish Anita's question first, but thank you so much, Persnickety, for the $50. That's crazy. Um, and I really do appreciate it. So, Anita, your question. So, uh, in no specific order, I would try paneer, which is great for cooking in Indian cuisine. Um, very simple to make. Ricotta, whole milk ricotta. I've got a whole milk ricotta recipe there. Um, uh, what else? Oh, halloumi. Oh, absolutely fantastic. You've got to try halloumi. Uh, make sure you grill it and don't eat it raw. Um, feta is a nice one to start with. If you're starting to go into cheddars and harder cheeses, then try um, kefili is perfect, ready in three weeks. And Guido's hard Italian cheese, which is ready in three weeks, but it's better if it's aged at least two months. Uh, and then it tastes a lot better. Okay, cool. Um, next question is from is from Heidi. Um, oh no, it's not. Hang on, Heidi. Sorry, I'll get to that in a second. I've got to show. Goodness me, there's so many things here. Where is it? There we go. Snickety's fifty dollar super chat. Thank you, mate. Uh, happy birthday, Gavin. Thanks for all you do. I really appreciate it. I do. Um, I'll buy myself some beers with that or some more cheese. Oh, you can never have enough cheese. Okay. Um, <laughs> I cracked myself up. Uh, Heidi, where'd your question go? There it is. Right. Heidi says, please explain the difference, different ripening times between your Stiltons. The blue one is 30 minutes, while the white, whilst the white one is 60 minutes. Indeed. So, my reasoning behind this, and I think the reasoning behind um, where they make the Stilton in um, in Stilton around there, anyway, um, is that because the um, blue Stilton version has Penicillium Roke Forty, uh, the Penicillium Roke Forty also breaks down the fats and uh, proteins to make flavours. Whereas with white stilton, you don't have that. So you, you have a longer acidification time up front before you add the rennet. That's the reason behind it. And I found that both work equally as well when the recipes are, are like that. So like I said, I'm working on my... So this is the stilton recipe out of my book. And you can see I've made some amendments, uh, more amendments. Um, so yeah, so we'll be... Um, Doing a taste test on that in a few months' time. It's going to age for about 90 days. Uh, and like I said, we're about a month into it, so that would be cool. All right, another question from a curd nerd. Uh, Scotty Orange. 
uh, says, uh, what cheese do you consider, what cheese do you consider would require the most skill to make? Ooh, good question. What was the hardest one I've tried to make? Probably, probably, probably the, yeah, the one that, the one that was, yeah, uh, I would say Shropshire Blue, right, so it's a, a blue cheese, blue cheeses aren't exactly hard, uh, aren't exactly easy to make, uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, and you've just got to follow the steps and make sure that you understand when it's becoming overripe, make sure there's enough oxygen uh, for the blue to grow and that sort of stuff. So as far as cheeses that take a while to ripen and need nursing, I would say blue cheeses and the washed rind cheeses like, um, you know, the stinky sock cheeses like Limburger and Brick and uh, Tilsit and that sort of stuff. Uh, they are difficult to make. Um, so they need some skill. And really, any cheese, any cheese where you use a culture needs a little bit of skill and understanding uh, of the process, so that you don't omit a step, or you don't think something's important. It absolutely is. So when I teach in the Curdnerd Academy, the beginners course has a very strict regime of sanitization first. And then basic understanding of all the steps of cheese making before you actually make a cheese. So yeah, you really need to understand the process. Um, making simple fresh cheeses, you don't really need to understand too much because it just happens and it's ready to eat straight away. But when you're aging something, Scotty, that's when uh, you absolutely need some skills to understand how to make them. Alrighty. Um, any other questions? Uh, Patricia says uh, you want to see red cheese I just purchased a bit of mimolette today and it's quite neon like in colour yeah I um, we still can't get it here uh, unfortunately well, I certainly haven't seen it um, because of the cheese mites even though we know that they get rid of all the cheese mites and brush it heavily before they sell it so but yeah, it's it's difficult to get your hands on, but I would love some Mimolette. Okay, um, next question is from... I uh, don't know why people are asking whether there's a Taco, taco Bell in, um, in Castlemaine. There's a very good cheese maker um, in, tar, uh, in the Castlemaine. But uh, welcome, Dominic, uh, who's in Castlemaine at the moment. Uh, cool Cat, g'day to you. Um, next question. Uh, Heidi says, awesome. Thanks for the answer on the Stiltons. I can't wait to see your updated blue. Indeed. And um, not only am I going to release it on the channel, I'm also going to pop that into the blue cheese course. So uh, even though the blue cheese course already has seven che blue cheeses, I'll throw that one in as well um, and have the fully printed recipe. So... Uh, yeah, so that'll be added into there. Um, Bruce says, My first two attempts at Parmesan failed because they went mouldy at the natural rind phase. If I skipped that and went straight to vac pack, would that work? Um, Bruce, good question. Uh, not necessarily... Yeah, they would, but they won't be dry. So they'll be... If you vacuum pack them straight away, and this is from experience, they tend to... They tend to stay moist and don't go grainy. So there's a little bit too much moisture in there. So you need at least a month of that natural rind phase. And all I do um, at that phase is I make sure that it, it, the, the, the rind will be fairly dry. So I just brush off any mold that's on there. Uh, and once that's, once that's brushed off, then I just give it a light coating of olive oil uh, and that keeps the moulds at bay for at least a week uh, and then you go and check it again. So once you get past that initial one month, it's dry, the rind's dry enough to create that grainy effect that we're after. Uh, and then you can vacuum pack it and then let it go for the 12 months and you'll get a lovely flavour. So do that. 
Um, I hope that helps. And thanks for the photos. I've got them for the gallery, um, Bruce. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Anthony says, Morbier is pretty difficult. Yeah, it's... Anything with an a with ash is, uh, is fiddly. Fiddly is the, the best way to do it, uh, to say it, I would say. Uh, cool Cat says, um, uh, how does a Welsh cheese get down the stairs? Oh, it's a joke. Oh, answer very carefully. Oh, very good. Yeah, nice. Um, Snickety says, mozzarella is tough. Uh, would rather make Jack in the Box. Yeah, it depends on which mozzarella you're making. A lot of people have trouble with um, quick mozzarella. Um, I'm not sure why, but they do. They don't get the acid um, right and they get grainy cheese. Um, traditional mozzarella is not that hard either. Um, in fact, I had a um, I had a consultation with Mike uh, from New York the other day and we went through some troubleshooting for... Uh, traditional mozzarella and work through all the steps and he's got some great results and shared the photos with me which I will show in the uh, show in the gallery so yes mozzarella is tough but if you uh, do a little bit of research then and understand what pH is it supposed to hit at what time then you're good to go um, Liz says, uh, I'm just starting a double Gloucester this morning for the first time. Your video was done five years ago. Any updates or changes since then? Uh, Liz, no. The, the recipe is good to go. Um, I didn't change anything. In fact, the double Gloucester was one of the cheeses uh, that I tasted during my lunch that I did live uh, during the um, 12 hours of cheese last year. And I must say, uh, after... Um, as a fight the the cheese was made like six and a half years ago um before i released the video uh and it was just absolutely divine um when it's aged uh for a long time or e even beforehand it was just beautiful um so yeah very good thanks mate um <clears throat> patricia says mozzarella scares me i've never made it um if you can get your hands on some buffalo milk, Patricia, it, it seems quite easy. Um, as long as you hit those right pH markers and as it's going along. Uh, Boris says, I just ordered 60 pounds of honey and planned on getting a new batch of mead going soon. Uh, do you have anything brewing right now? Um, no, I don't, Boris. I don't have anything brewing in the kitchen. Uh, a little bit too cold at the moment. I know you can get heating pads and the like. Um, but I just I just don't have anything on the go. I'll, I'm still drinking the um, the mead and the bland from the last two. You know I'm a very slow drinker, so I've still got what a bottle of mead left from that mead that I made that video, and I think I've got two bottles of bland. So yeah, they they're just you know doing their own thing. They'll be even better when I get to them next time. Um, uh, Dominic says, I'm going to France in June. Can bring back some mimolette if you want some. If you can sneak through customs, don't tell anybody. I, you know, we're only live on the internet, but don't tell anybody, Dominic. But yeah, I'd love a piece of mimolette if you get some. Uh, and like, we can catch up. That would be good. A cup of tea and a crumpet or a coffee and a piece of my cheese. How's that sound? Uh, Michael says, um, I got a Jarlsberg, was waxed on the 30th of April, two weeks in the cheese cave, now sitting in the office between 17 and 19, but still hasn't started to bulge yet. Yeah, it takes about um, two weeks, two weeks before you start to see it bulge. Michael, I don't know how long it's been sitting there uh, at office temperature, but it will, it'll happen. And then all of a sudden it'll happen fast and uh, it'll crack the wax. So yeah, a little bit of patience. Um, I'm not sure you haven't really said. So two weeks, April. So that's the start of, so it was today, 21st. Yeah, so it should have, yeah, by that calculation, it's only been in there a week. So yeah, it'll take a little while before it starts to swell and cradle the eyes. Um, Persnickety says, I have some bland going through clarification. I'll be happy when I can read through the damage on. Yeah, that's perfect. 
um, persnicky that's when you can tell it's ready to go we can actually see through um, uh, Katarina says Google tells me that nachos were named after its creator Ignacio Anaya oh, I think that's how we're up. 30 years after sodium citrate was first used to homogenize cheese so it does seem like it's just coincidental I don't know why we're talking about um, nachos but yes nice Patricia says curious to know uh, what you know about the making of mimolette are there cheese mites lured in by the cheese or added physically what do they do to the cheese anything else yes I do know a little bit about it um, so from what I've seen uh, I can't remember where I saw it but what they do that once they've made the cheese and they've air dried it and it's got a you know a little bit of a rind they actually add the mimolette to a box of straw so a wooden box with straw in it that actually is l hundreds of these little cheese mites millions lots anyway it's crawling it's like um like a nightmare it's like an alfred hitchcock movie um when they put the cheese in there and the cheese mites start to dig into the the rind of the cheese so yeah so it must be fun time <laughs> getting them out and getting all the mites off it and they're all over your hands and oh be horrible anyway so yeah that's what they do um uh uh bruce says thanks i'll give it a go no problems uh persnickety says what's the difference between ma and mo cultures they have the same basic so percentage of each um only difference is different manufacturers persnickety that's it uh the ma series is made by denisco and the mo series is made by sacco which is from italy and denisco is from france there you go um uh, lisa says what makes howder cheese chalky um lisa i'm not sure that howder that I eat is not chalky. It's more, um, I don't know, the paste is more relax, elastic, if that makes sense, when it's finished. Uh, if it's chalky, then um, I'm just thinking what could happen during the process. Uh, maybe a little bit too much rennet would do it. It'll lock in too much moisture and too much calcium. Um, it's the only thing I can really think of. Um, but yeah, normal chowder, uh, after the curd's washed and the acidity's nice and low, then yeah, normally get a fairly elastic sort of paste and it's very lovely. Um, Jeanette says, uh, regards uh, Jarlsberg, during the first short pressing, the weight slipped, resulting in a very wonky cheese. What would be the correct way to fix this? Uh, I just cut off the lopsided bits and re-spread them yeah that'll work um wh what would what would fix this uh get a better press <laughs> uh is uh, my suggestion um yeah so just uh just uh, try that Jeanette maybe a different press but yeah cutting off the lopsided bits yeah fine with Yalesburg it's very forgiving once it's got a rind uh, and it's had its cool phase once it goes to the warm phase it'll just expand the inside um, being the elastic cheese it is uh, just a suggestion to from persnickety add the three cues so I can see the questions yeah it does help a bit thank you very much persnickety um, next question uh, Davo g'day Davo says that I'm starting a double gloss this morning too well done it's very good uh, Patricia says uh, I may be able to get a bit of buffalo milk later in the spring but it is very expensive or pretty expensive does your New York friend have any thoughts on blending buffalo with cows for a mozzarella um, Mike says he couldn't get any buffalo milk himself so what I suggested to him was to get a um, uh, at least um, uh, uh, what's it called Friesian Holstein milk, which is about 3.8%. So don't use standard milk. If you can get um, unhomogenized cow's milk, then you're doing okay. Patricia and the mozzarella will work fine. His certainly did. 
and in five minutes I'll show you the photo. Um, he said he could get Buffalo's milk, but it was very expensive as well, which it is, because I can get it too, but it's really expensive here. We're talking like nearly $10 a litre. Uh, so, you know, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars are nearly the same. So, yeah, it's not cheap. Um, and I can only buy it by the 20 litre bucket. So, small fortune later, uh, 200 bucks worth of Buffalo milk. Yeah, I, I'm not going to fork out that much. Unless some, you know, unless somebody sponsors me. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, for anybody out there watching. Um, yeah, and he made a, a real, really nice looking mozzarella um, based on my suggestions and uh, tweaks to his recipe, Patricia. So uh, it was good. Um, <laughs> uh, Anthony says, uh, be a good gorg... Uh, what? I was going to say Gorgonzola, a Godzilla sort of movie where radiation gets into the Mimolette factory. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would. Yeah, interesting. Nice. Goodness me. Um, Croesus of Borg says no ch bug cheese for me. Indeed. Katarina, um, you, <laughs> Gav, you read part two of the message, which sounds like gibberish without the first part. Oh goodness, uh, what? What have I done? Oh right. Hang on, I'm trying to find the first part of Katarina's message. I didn't get it. No, I didn't get the first part. Uh, that's probably why I read the second part. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. So yeah, that's the reason why. Sorry about that. Um, you could do the first part again. If you had a link in it, it won't show. Um, anyway. Um, so, uh, Persnickety says, the first cheese was Colby and learn from there, uh, from top down. Yeah, Colby's not too difficult to make. It does have that step in the middle where you've got to... Um, uh, so, that does have the step in the middle where you've got to wash the curds. So... Um, getting the temperatures of the washing water correct is sometimes a little bit difficult. Uh, but uh, look, I've made Colby before and it turned out fantastic. It was beautiful. In fact, I had a friend who I gave it to. Her name's Jessie. She lives in Wales now. She migrated from Australia to Wales. Um, and uh, she, all, the only cheese she ever ate was Colby. She never didn't like any other cheese for whatever reason. Anyway, so I had her around for... Um, for dinner and I served some Colby no lunch and I served her some Colby and she actually she was the first person I ever heard use the word cheesegasm uh, so yeah that's where I got that idea from uh, she said this <laughs> I think I've just had a cheesegasm from the Colby so yeah uh, and that's not a dirty word cheesegasm is quite clean uh, it just means that rush of uh, rush of emotion you get when you've eaten a wonderful homemade cheese. There you go. Um, uh, Jeanette says, lol, it's the first time using my homemade press. I now know how important it is to center everything correctly. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, well done. You'll get the hang of it. <laughs> You'll get the hang of it. Uh, Persnickety says, what's the difference between MA and MO cultures? Uh, they have the same ingredients, so ratios. Uh, once again, I think I answered this. Um, different manufacturers. Uh, MA series are made by Denisco Choose It and MO series are made by Sacco. Uh, same ingredients. Probably the ratios are probably the same too or fairly close to it. Um, uh, next question. Right, first part. Uh, fun fact. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, right, so this is the first part of the nacho thing. Um, uh, cheesy fun fact, sodium citrate emulsifier to prevent cheese from splitting when heated, yep, which I've made, and I've made a video on it. Uh, the chemical formula is Na3C6H507. If you remove the numbers, you're left with nacho. Coincidence? Mm, don't know. Um, very... <laughs> Very interesting. Yes. I don't, I don't know if they called nacho cheese that, but it could be the bloke as well, like you mentioned before. So, yeah. 
Very cool. All right, it's time for the gallery, uh, my curd nerd friends. Let's, uh, before we start the gallery, of course, it's brought to you by you, the curd nerds watching the show. Uh, and all the photos are sent in by home cheese makers. Uh, and let me just say, they are all amazing. Uh, so let me just uh, pop this up on the screen. Here we go. Uh, hopefully, yep, you can all still hear me, which is cool. So the first one is from Bruce, who's in the chat. And Bruce says, uh, Hi, Gavin. Good to speak earlier. He, he rang me from New Zealand, um, which is a thing you can do, apparently. Um, it says, thanks for the advice on the Parmesan. Um, I have attempted it twice now and uh, both have gone bad at the phase trying to achieve the natural rind. Um, uh, creation before three month vac pack has gone mouldy when I vacked it, packed it and it probably had mould on it. Uh, I'm a bit more experienced now, I'll give it another go, but thinking I'll go straight to vacuuming and packing it after it's air dried rather than waiting three months. Like we discussed just, just before Bruce, um, try and do it for one month and then you're good to go. Anyway, so attached are some photos of my successes. I've made Appenzella three times now and all have been great. I've used honey mead I purchased uh, at a New Zealand company. The regular washing with the mead prevents uh, build up of mold, something I've always struggled with. Um, for instance, uh, getting the humidity right. So that looks pretty good. Nice rind too. A little bit of mold infection just down, down there. But that's okay. Looks like it's a very nice looking paste. And that's the outside that he's been rubbing. You get a nice bee linen smear going on there. But it looks fairly firm, so yeah, really good looking Appenzella there. Uh, and there's an, the outside of the cheese. So let me just go back to that other one. Got some eye formation too. There must be some natural propionic sh um, shimani um, uh, bacteria that's crept in there somewhere but yeah you got some eye development that looks pretty funky so yeah perfectly good um, and um, Bruce says and this is the milk that he's used um, Lewis Road creamy organic milk non homogenized very nice uh, and there's the he's got some darker oh this is for the mustard seed one right okay so this is for the next photo that's coming up so he's used some organic everythings. So that's fantastic. Um, okay, so the next, here it is. Right, uh, it says the mustard and dark ale was great. We And we'll try toasting the seeds next time. Uh, and the howder I waxed and aged for a year. Right, there's a howder somewhere. Uh, that's some more um, uh, ale on mustard. And, oh, looks like a press I know. Um, and there's the final result of the Arla Mustard. It looks absolutely fantastic. And that's the Howder. Got a little bit of late blowing going on there and that's why they use Lysolac in, um, in Howder in the Netherlands. Um, and I actually just asked for a sample from a company called Biostemmer or something like that um, from the Netherlands. Um, I'm seeing if uh, they're gonna send me a Lysolac sample from the Netherlands. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Um, because I just can't buy it here in Australia. So I want to see if I can get some. Um, because I really, I, I too, not this extreme, but I do have a little bit of issue with some, uh, when I make howder and eat them, I get the, the late blowing going on as well. Um, and it can be extreme sometimes. This looks not so bad, but I've had a whole Parmesan that it's just been a circle on the inside, a big bubble on the inside because um, I didn't do something right. Anyway, uh, it says, uh, I'm really enjoying it and wish I didn't have a day job uh, so I had more time to perfect it. Thanks for your videos. They are great. Cheers, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce, for sending all those amazing photos in of your cheese. They look great. All right. This is a conversation I had with Mike. Uh, uh, one of my, my first consultations. Not the first, but the first since I've put up my consultation page on... Um, courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au um, Mike says uh, thank you very much for your time yesterday I learned a lot. My mozzarella today came out pretty good. I think it was still a little grainy with a squeaky bite to it but it was a major improvement on my previous attempts uh, I did it in the sous vide as you suggested and I made the t maintained the temperature throughout the process. 
the only things I would say are when I strained the curd and hung the colander over the heated the way the curd did cool down more than I expected and the pH was 5.04 when I stretched it. I Mitch missed the ideal pH but uh, a bit I'll be a bit more careful next time it crept up on me see two pictures uh, sorry I attached two pictures I thought you'd like to see thank you again Mike so yeah nice so he's got a nice stretchy curd there um, hanging off a, a spatula and there is the final product so very nice a very stable looking mozzarella so well done Mike uh, congratulations I'm glad the chat we had helped you out so there you go all right uh, this is from Patricia and Patricia has sent me in some lovely photos uh, says here are two photos for your next gallery the fir first photo is my most recent whey ricotta just before draining uh, I always make ricotta from the whey only I don't fortify it with milk uh, so it's f rare for me to get such great separation of curds and whey the whey was just so clear this time I had to share it looks great and it, it's very delicate stuff too um, whey ricotta so well done to you and I love I do love the clearness of the way can we get in close there we go look at that you can read a book through it as persnickety says righto uh, the next photo is also from Patricia look at that uh, so that's a variation on um, all right so let's have a look it says uh, the second photo is my number seven in my Sweeney Todd series of cheeses called the butler uh, the inspirational lyrics from the musical uh, Mrs. Lovett says Potter Mr. Todd said something hotter um, Mrs. Lovett says butler so this hot butler was based on your triple pepper jack recipe uh, with a lot less pepper um, I wanted it spicy but not terrifyingly um, eight liters of pasteurized cream lined cow's milk one tablespoon of chili flakes produced a two pound 10 ounce or 1.19 kilo that barely fit into my two pound regular uh, rectangular basket uh, it's air drying now I plan to enjoy my butler after it spends three months in the cheese cave happy birthday to you this coming Tuesday thanks Patricia and uh, yeah lovely looking cheese um, hope, hopefully it doesn't shrink too much in the block form but it looks really good I don't know if that's a is that a square or a rectangle no it's a rectangle um, but it's a good looking cheese so well done um, triple pepper jack butler without the triple just pepper jack <laughs> all right this one's from persnickety um, uh, aka Michael um, says howdy Gav uh, well, I attempted a proper cheddar this time and it mostly came out right. I used MA11 for the culture and might not have had the final crumb size right. Uh, the cheese knit, but not completely. Um, so I vacuum packed. Sorry, vacuum packing will sort that out over time. Yes, it will. Um, you can see the curd blocks underneath the plastic that you can see. But that all knit together, no problems whatsoever. Uh, came in just over eight pounds goodness me so that's uh, nearly four kilograms that's a big cheese um, with almost two pounds of ricotta and seven gallons of spent whey uh, for sister-in-law's garden use every part of the pig as the expression goes indeed uh, wishing you and Kim the best curd nerdly persnickety thank you persnickety that's a great looking cheese um, and big and seven gallons of whey that's a lot of whey <laughs> uh, but yeah great in the garden develops biodiversity in the soil and last but not least this one's from Tamara and Tamara says um, hi Gavin I recently racked my first batch of bland mead this week uh, it's aged eight and a half months so far I made it where from the way of goat's cheese it has caramel and floral notes very nice a lovely looking mead um, the way came from a cream cheese that I made with Nubian goat milk flavored with Floridanica the honey was a local clover honey 
Um, I used a mead yeast to ferment it. Uh, I would not recommend drinking it for at least six months. There is a goaty enzyme flavor that developed uh, in the first week of fermentation. It took about six months uh, to be completely undetectable. Uh, now it is incredibly smooth. I love it chilled. I'm going to make another one gallon batch uh, this year. Pictures of our happy goats. Tamara from Piedmont M R F Nubians. All right, let's have a look at the goats that made the mead. Oh, that's a happy looking goat. Look at that. Smiles on their dials. Look at that. And I love the grassy pasture. It's good to see goats enjoying a little bit of grass there. A little, that's a lot. Um, but they look really healthy. Well done, Tamara. Lovely flock of goats. Flock? No, that's not it. Herd. Herd of goats. Well done. I think that's it. That's the gallery. That's done. Yes. Back to me. Um, thank you, everybody, for sending in all of your cheesy pictures. If you want to learn, if you want to put your cheesy pictures in, hang on, let me just uh, bring that up. Um, if you want to... Uh, if you want to send me your cheesy pictures, just go to the channel page and go to the end and go to about. So go to the about page and down here it says detailed for business inquiries, uh, view email address and click on that and Bob's your uncle or your auntie and um, you can send me through your photos of your cheese. So yeah absolutely fantastic so do that i'd love to see photos of your cheese or even if you're having some issues then send through the photos with an explanation of what you think is going on and i will help you out um, during the live stream um, alternatively um, i can consult as well anyway um, fantastic looking uh, cheeses one and all so thank you everybody who sent them in to me today Okay, um, all right, I'm sure we've got some more questions. We've got 20-something uh, minutes to go. Um, and there are lots of stuff that I haven't read yet. Let's have a look. Um, so Katarina says that um, uh, it seems that uh, it is... We're talking about the nachos. Quince and nachos is named after the dish's creator, or so Google tells me. So, yeah, it doesn't. It's very interesting that in the chemical formula it does actually have the word nacho, so very good. Um, uh, Persnickety said cheesegasms are a thing. Yes, indeed they are. Um, and you've seen me... Uh, if you watch the uh, taste tests, uh, you'll see many of them. <laughs> it's, uh, they just... The cheeses are just beautiful. So, yeah, well done. All right, um... Uh, Jeanette says, Bob was my dad. Ah, nice. Um, also, uh, Boris says, those goats have some ears on them. Yes, Tamara's goats, the Nubian ones, they do have long ears. Um, yeah, it must keep the dust out of them when they're in Nubia. Uh, Nubia is now part of Egypt and, oh, I think it's Ethiopia. Is where they originated from many many eons ago uh, and long ears kept the dust out of their ears so yeah um, that's what I learnt once when I read about Nubian goats um, yeah and they and I agree Jeanette very happy goats indeed <sighs> very cool um, okay so uh, Katarina's got a comment on, uh, I always love the gallery, but it always makes me want breakfast. Yeah, I haven't had breakfast yet. Cheese on toast sounds like the go. I've got some, uh, some uh, very tasty jack-in-the-box that uh, we're going through at the moment. And uh, yeah, a little bit of spice for breakfast <laughs> on toast. I might even grill them. That'd be nice. Grilled cheese sandwich on a Sunday morning. Couldn't think of anything better, really. Um... Uh, Shauna says, um, and a happy birthday to Kim as well. I remember, seem to remember that your birthdays are quite close. Indeed, they are, Shauna. They're two weeks apart. So uh, hers is in early June. Uh, mine is in late May. So, yeah, we actually celebrate 
the birthday day together, um, usually on her birthday. So we normally do something nice, um, uh, get a, a decent takeaway or, um, or go to a restaurant. So yeah, it's nice. Um, thank you, Shauna. I'll pass that on to her. Um, <laughs> oh, goodness. If Nubians come from Nubia, where do ruffians come from? Ruffiello? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Um, goodness me. Uh, Croesus says, I finally got a friend from Wisconsin to bring me uh, 1.5 pounds. What's that? Just, just under a kilo? Yeah. So about 700 grams of Limburger to Florida. How did it taste? That's the question. Um, uh, Persnickety says uh, the gallery pushes him to do better. Yes, it does. Me too. I'm, I'm always uh, amazed um, with the photos that people send in to me. They're just amazing cheeses. Um, Croesus of Borg says that his uh, Limburger tasted amazing. So, yeah, very cool. Um, one thing I just wanted to share... Um, Whilst there seems to be a lack of questions, uh, where is it? Gav, where'd you put it? Um, over on the course page, uh, I did something special. So this is the course page. This is courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au. So I've got the coaching page there where you can consult with me. I've got the two normal books. Uh, so keep calm and make more cheese and keep calm and make cheese. Um, I have to change these icons. They're a little bit bitty. Uh, we've got the two courses, of course, and then I created this a couple of days ago. So we've got a Key Karma Make Cheese bundle, so you can get both of my eBooks now with a 15% discount. You couldn't do that on Spring, uh, where the books used to reside. Uh, so now that we have um, them all on my course page, uh, you can get both eBooks at a discount, uh, and the downloads actually work, unlike they did on Spring. So I was told. So I've had good results uh, and people that have bought it lately, I've, I've gone back and asked them and I can, I can ask them. On spring, I couldn't ask anybody anything. Um, so uh, yeah, so that that's, you can, I can interact with people that buy the stuff from us because it's our own page. So yeah, you can go and check that out at courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Um, yeah, just wanted to show people the bundle was available. Okay, Patricia's got a question. It says, any updates on the 2023 edition of 12 Hours of Cheese? Um, current update, um, if I remember rightly, it was the 2nd of July. Let me just have a look if that's a Sunday. Um, uh, June, July, 2nd. Yeah, that's a Sunday. So 2nd of July is the day it's going to be on. So for you, that'll be the 1st of July, Patricia. Um um, as far as guests go so far, um, I have not, um, I have not locked in any of the interviews. I should start doing that soon. I usually do it around my birthday to start, you know, get the ball rolling as far as planning. Um, as far as 12 hours of cheese, I might cut it back a little bit. Um, it was very draining. It took me a day or so to recover from last time. It's just the mental, you know, the the deep thought that I've got, the concentration that I've got to do during the 12 hours of cheese. So from 7 a.m. my time till 7 p.m. It was absolutely massive. So, um, yeah, so I might cut it back to, say, 10 hours and we'll get some interview, some really good interviews in there. Um, thank you uh, to Katarina um, I really appreciate the ten dollars Australian. It says need to get ready for my grandson twins first Holy Communion today. Congratulations! Hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, happy birthday for Tuesday, Gav. Chow to all. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, so um, Patricia says first uh, of July is a big holiday in Canada. Canada Day, the country's birthday. So not sure I'll be home that day. You can catch it on your mobile, Patricia, during a lull in the celebrations. Um, <laughs> don't forget that. Uh, Jeanette says, you beauty, I'll head over to buy the books now. Thank you, Jeanette. Appreciate it. 
I look forward to processing your order. It's all automatic, so it's okay. Oh, cool. Goodness me. Um, one one thing um, one one thing I forgot to mention was that consulting page, and I forgot there's some nuances around it. So when you when you uh, apply to for a consulting session, I'm not saying you have to. You guys get a lot of the info from here anyway. But if you've got something specific and you obviously can't fit it in the chat and I, I get so many emails, I just can't read them all. Um, the consulting one, um, you apply for consultancy. Oh, I approve it once I have a look at it. Uh, once it's approved, you go and pay for the session and then you can book at the same time automatically. You can book the one hour session uh, via this special calendar that I've set up and it's all automatic and I get a notification um, when your preferred time is and I'll be there. So there we go. Um, yeah, very cool. So that's, yeah, so it's mostly automated. I like that. Um, CL says, um, hello, everybody. Hi, Gav. I love, I'd love to see you interview some of the amazing people here uh, in this community. Indeed. Um, and I do intend to, that's for sure. Thank you, CL. Um, and uh, yeah, if anybody would like to... Uh, be interviewed then drop me a line via email uh, and you saw that and thank you so much to Shauna um, says happy birthday for Tuesday and thank you for all your assistance over the years thank you Shauna I really appreciate the $20 um, and uh, yeah I will enjoy my birthday <laughs> don't worry about that I might even not ship any orders that day I'll do them all on Monday and then have a break and do them again on Wednesday and have a day off. Maybe I'll do that. I'm a home. I'm a small business owner. I can do stuff like that. Why not? Um, so yeah, very cool. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who's done a super chat today. It's been fantastic. Um, you know, I might not have the biggest viewership for uh, the live stream, but I have the most amazing curd nerds that come and watch it really do appreciate all your time and i you know for me it's early um for you guys you're taking time out of when dinner time is and and for those in australia it's early as well so yeah it's very good um uh jeanette says i can't find the e ebook bundle on the page oh i might have some um oh i know what i've done uh, some ministration issues. Hang on, I can I can fix that on the stream. Oh goodness me! Can I do that? Let's have a look. Quick, quick. <laughs> oh, 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 let me see if you can if I can fix it. Um, uh, there is an issue where. Uh, okay, that's good. Uh, pages. Uh, Sorry, my bad. I've done something wrong here. Um, and while I'm fixing that... No, that's not it. Oh, my goodness. I'll have to fix it a little bit later. Uh, try again in about an hour, Jeanette, and I will... Um, I'll fix it straight after the stream. I know exactly what I've done wrong. I haven't displayed it on the pages where it's supposed to be, so... Um, yeah, sorry about that. And uh, we will get to that soon. I will. I can send you the link of the bundle. How does that sound? Do I have a page for that? Um, and there's another. It's me. It's all happening now. Um, but yeah, I'll fix that, Jeanette. Sorry about that. Um, Boris says, uh, "Happy early birthday. Uh, go have yourself a Guinness." Thank you, Boris. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, yeah. Jeanette says I'll come back to Savo. Don't fret. All right, I won't fret. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Uh, Persnickety says I'll recommend the physical books. They are in binder format, so they lay flat, unlike conventional books. Thanks for the plug there, Persnickety. Yes, I did send um, uh, Michael these um, the books, the physical ones. He paid for them, of course, and I sent them to the US for him. And uh, yeah, I that's why I did bind them. I physically bound them myself, self published. Um, and uh, yeah, they lay flat and you can fold them over and yeah, it's so good putting on a on a recipe stand in the kitchen. It's so much easier than having to spread the bound book open. 
and split in the spine. I've done that on a couple of cheese books. Don't you worry about that. Anyway, uh, Gooseberry Hollow says, Hey folks, just popped in to say hi and then go nap. Um, building a deck all day. Missing curd nerds. Enjoy your deck. Um, it should be good fun. And uh, yeah, don't get any splinters. Anyway. Um, Jeanette says, I wish I could. I'm on a limited budget. Um, that's okay, Jeanette. I'm, I'm, I'm on a limited budget too. Um, Kim and I have really had to tighten our belts uh, because sales on um, Little Green Workshops um, aren't massive at the moment. So we're not struggling. We just had to tighten our belts. Uh, there's another uh, ooh, super chat. Thank you, Patricia. Um, it says offering another offering for a very happy birthday. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate the $5.50 Canadian. That's a lot of money. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and you have a fantastic day too, Patricia. Uh, and may all your cheesy dreams come true. All righty. That'll do for today, I think. Thank you so much to everybody who has thrown a super chat my way. It's been amazing. Um, I will spend it wisely, as I always do. Um, so, uh, those... The, <laughs> I know I've been plugging the Curd Nerd Academy a lot, but anyway, here we are. Courses.littleringworkshops.com.au. Two courses, the Beginner's Cheese Making course and the Blue Cheese course. Uh, structured. Structured courses, not like the rando YouTube videos that you see on the channel. Uh, and you learn a lot beforehand. Don't you worry about that. Lots and lots of videos that you will never see on YouTube. Um in that course and if you want to get any cheese making supplies you can pick them up at littlegreenworkshops.com.au uh, and we ship all over the world don't forget the merch if you want t-shirts mugs all that sort of cool certified curd nerd stuff and the like go to merch.cheeseman.tv and uh, they ship all over the world ship from the us and europe i believe um yeah so shipping is pretty cheap in those kind in those areas Anyway, very cool. Thank you, everybody, um, for a wonderful show. I really enjoy I do. Honestly, I enjoy the, making this show. I enjoy getting up early on a Sunday morning. Kim said to me this morning, just before we go, she said, uh, you're dedicated, Gav. And I said, honey, it's because I love doing it and talking to all, um, all the curd nerds. I really do. It makes my day. So i got to buzz on for the rest of the day. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it and I'll see you next Sunday so until next time see you later bye bye